First story that I've got for you guys today, a physique update of Sean Carita, your current 212 Mr. Olympia champ at four weeks out from the 2023 Arnold Classic Men's Open Bodybuilding Division. He says in the caption that Jay Cutler called him the X Factor going into the Arnold Classic weekend. And he also gives his body weight 190 pound at four weeks out, which is actually heavy for Sean Clarita. And I've got to say, he looks pretty freaking here even at 190, which I think is probably 10 pound heavier than he was on stage at the Olympia. I believe he said he competed in the low 180, so maybe he's trying to come in bigger here because it's a men's open show. But obviously, as usually is the case with Sean, he's got rippling vascularity all over his arms and chest, shoulders, lots of striations, lots of detail. Sean Clarita's strong point conditioning, that's what he's bringing to the Arnold Classic. That's no surprise. Now, what I'm curious to see is if he's somehow able to come in bigger here with the same or even better conditioning that he had when he was competing in 212 at the Olympia. Because obviously, you know, he is 190 is bigger for Sean. I believe the first Olympia that he won, he weighed like 177 on stage winning that show, but I kind of wonder if he's trying to grow into this open lineup. I also wonder if he's going to sacrifice any conditioning in doing so, because another thing that's different about Sean, when you talk about 212 guys going over to open, a lot of the 212 guys that do better in open are guys that were right at that limit or had trouble making the 212 weight class. They were already kind of busting through that division because their bodies wanted to grow and they were already a little bit too big and they were struggling to make that 212 weight. It's a little bit different for Sean because he's like 20-something pounds below that limit. He's well within 212. So when we talk about him coming in heavier at an open show, it's not because he was restricted by 212. It's because he's trying to be heavier. So I think that's an important distinction to make, and I think that's going to be the interesting thing to watch at the Arnold Classic, is that's the main difference between Sean and a lot of the guys that you see do open from 212. They were already too heavy be anyway, and open was just better for their physiques because they could grow. Think about Hottie. Think about Bonac. Think about Derek. I do actually think Clarita is going to be top three. I'm still very hesitant to make a prediction that he would win the whole show. It's possible. But again, I gotta go back to if Clarita is able to beat Nick Walker and Big Rami, two of the freakiest, most muscular, this is open bodybuilding, bodybuilders like Nick Walker. He's called the mutant for a reason. He's a freak. Big Rami is like the biggest modern bodybuilder. Some consider him to be the biggest Mr. Olympia champion of all time in terms of body weight. But I think him and Ronnie Coleman were pretty close, at least as far as the weight that Rami was when he won. But it just brings me back to that point. If Sean can beat both Nick Walker and Big Romney at the second biggest show in bodybuilding, what's going to happen to the 212 division? Because I don't think it serves any purpose if that's the case, and I'm not saying that would be a bad thing. If Sean were able to do that, I think that would be fascinating and actually pretty cool. But if Sean were able to beat two of the biggest, freakiest, unrestricted, just growing mass monsters in open, being a restricted, basically, that's what 212 is, the restricted weight class, being a restricted weight guy, then at what point does 212 and open, it's all just bodybuilding. The same exact rules, just different weights. At what point is it like, what's the point? And I really think if you do see Clarita beat, and again, not even just Nick and Romney, but Andrew Jack, Samson Douda, these are near 300-pound guys as well. For Sean to win, he would be beating all these guys. And for him to beat that many guys, close to 300 pound, if that's the case, What's the point in 212? Now, next up in the news, we did get an update from Andrew Jack, not a full physique update, but a training video with his new coach, Chris Psycho Lewis. And in this video, he is wearing like a stringer tank top and not a sweatshirt or a hoodie like he was during his entire Olympia prep. And again, I think to me that suggests confidence because like we talked about the Olympia prep, he went on record saying he was very sick and almost pulled, pulled out of the Olympia and was not confident at all in his ability to perform at the Olympia. Just like a couple of weeks out, I think he said like four weeks out, he was considering pulling out, and I think that really is the reason why he was so covered up in all the updates. But here, prepping for the Arnold Classic with his two new coaches, Chris Psycho, Lewis, Chris Aceto, you're seeing a lot more of Andrew Jack, a lot more confidence, and you see that crazy roundness and fullness again. That, I think, is the main reason why people are so impressed with Andrew is in such a short amount of time, he's really become an A-list bodybuilder.
one of the best in the world, top 10 at the Olympia. And I feel like we're all talking so much about Nick, talking about Romney, even Samson and Sean. But I think Andrew Jack gets left out of that conversation a little bit because he kind of didn't live up to these pretty massive expectations that a lot of people had for him at the Olympia, even though I think him placing top 10 while being sick during his prep eyes a massive accomplishment, and regardless of him being sick top 10 at his first ever Olympia, is tremendous for him. I don't think it was a bad showing at all, just not quite the level that people expected. But could these pretty major adjustments actually, with his new coaches and some minor improvements, could that lead to a next-level version of Andrew Jack if he's 10% sharper here? Could we all be wasting our time talking about Nick winning another one, talking about Big Ramey, talking about Samson? And could Andrew Jack come in here and just blow everybody away? He's already got the size and shape. He's got crazy genetic roundness. I mean, look how capped his delts are. It's just genetics, crazy V-taper. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think he's got the best abs in the IFPB right now, or at least in open bodybuilding. Nick Walker got deep abs also. I think Andrew Jacked is the real deal. And I also think if he comes in 10 to 15% better than the Olympia, he could win this Arnold. All these guys looking for redemption, and these are all guys that could win the show if they are improved. William Bonak looking for redemption. Andrew Jack looking for redemption. Big Rammy's also looking for redemption in a very big way. But let me know what you guys think about the first two stories. Who do you guys think is going to place higher at the Arnold Classic or has a better chance of winning? Do you think it's going to be Sean Clarita, the 212 Mr. Olympia champ, or Andrew Jack, one of the fastest rising stars in the IFBB right now? Let me know in the comments below. Now, next up in the news, unfortunately, we have a very sad story. Women's bodybuilding icon, legendary Tanya Knight passed away on February 7th. So yesterday, after a battle with cancer, she was only 56 years old. Now, I thought one of the most touching tributes for Tanya Knight came from six-time Miss Olympia champion Corey Everson. So Corey posts on her Instagram a photo of Tanya and said, Today is a very, very sad day when we say goodbye to Tanya Knight, the most beautiful angel we were blessed with on earth and now an angel in heaven. I don't know if Tanya ever really knew the enormous impact that she had on the world. I believe she was too humble to really know. She was respected by men and women alike, athlete and non-athlete competitor and non-competitor. Tanya's appeal reached the masses with her beauty, her talent, her silly personality, her charm, her drive, and her gentle, humble nature. This loss is hitting all of us very hard. For those who knew Tanya personally or were distant acquaintances, and for the rest of us who were huge fans, rest in peace and know the love and respect we all have for you. Our deepest condolences to her family and loved ones. So if you guys don't know who Tanya Knight is, she was an icon in women's bodybuilding. If you search her up on YouTube, you'll find she had some very interesting, very entertaining posing routines. Some of the best in her time. Rest in peace, Tanya Knight. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Please check out the links in the video description. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about it. Subscribe if you like the content.